But again, we have a long way to go because every black person experiences a mental disorder because of their environmental factors, which is epigenetics. Poverty, all of these conditions, these stressful conditions, lack of jobs, lack of education, lack of resources to get out of your impoverished environment is all mapped towards the dominant white society. That is racism, white supremacy, family. It's a systematic approach to oppress a group of people. It's just that simple. You already know what it is, Chauncey, a.k.a. You, Karima, Great Man of God Media with another G M O G Media TV Spotlight family. All right, family, today's topic, I want to talk about why all black people suffer from a mental disorder. All right, this was actually a request from a couple of uh, supporters to the channel. And um, I want to break it down further because, um, you know, I'll be getting a lot of um, great feedback from the last few videos, the last couple of um, reaction videos. Shout out to Shotnetta for uh, featuring me on his channel. And uh, shout out to the new subscribers, man. I really appreciate you guys. I, I, you know, my channel, I, as you guys know, and the new subscribers also, um, my channel is about counter racism. On this channel, I talk about issues that affect black people collectively as a group. And I offer my suggestions on how to replace this broken system of injustice, which is racism, white supremacy, with a system of justice. So if you're brand new, please subscribe. But again, appreciate all the new subscribers. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe right now. All right, family. So, um, yeah, breaking down why all black people in this country suffer from a mental disorder. And I'm going to break it down in this video, family. You know, and, and you know, black people, we're, we're visual learners. So I try to make sure I visualize and illustrate things so it's easy to digest for you guys. And I'm going to break it down in this video. So basically, family, as I always say, we live in a system of racism, white supremacy. They control all nine areas of activity. That's economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex and war. All right. So when you live in a system of racism, white supremacy, and when you live in a system where your descendants, your descendants of Africa, all right, your descendants were oppressed for over 400 years, lynched, murdered, castrated, subjugated, mistreated, dominated, etc. For over 400 years, there is what you call brain trauma and you don't have to have a physical bat to suffer brain trauma from issues regarding slavery okay and the thing about it is family we have been suffering for so long that black people don't even know they have a mental disorder right that's one of the causes of the issue that we're dealing with with racism white supremacy the power of racism white supremacy is for people to disconnect you of your history disconnect you from where you came from all right so when we when we were forced to come here right forced to come here to the new world aka the wilderness of north america our language was taken our culture was taken our spiritual practices were taken, stripped, and we were given all of these things that were taken away. They were given to us by Europeans. So all of those things were disconnected from our culture, our history, right? Directly from Africa. All right. So much so that I don't have it on the screen so you can see. There was a study that came out last year, as you can see on the screen. All right, family, descendants of African-Americans find trauma during slavery that are passed through their children's genes. All right, family, I'm going to read some of the article for you guys. All right. The new findings is the first example in humans of the theory of epigenetic inheritance. 
the idea that environmental factors affect the genes of offspring. Genetic changes stemming from the trauma suffered by African Americans capable of being passed to their children. The clearest sign yet that the one past life's experience can affect subsequent generations. All right. The conclusion from a research team, they found, they studied 156 African-American men, women, all right, and they also did uh, DNA from their great-great-grandparents, all right, who had either been enslaved by uncoughed European Americans, witnessed or experienced torture under slavery, or had to, had to run to the American North Canada for safety. They also analyze the genes of their children who are known to have increased likelihood of stress disorders. And compared to the results with the descendants of African families who were living in Africa during three centuries of the continued American humanitarian crisis, the gene change in their children can only be attributed to the trauma of slavery in their great great grandparents. All right, so now this study here was done last year and they did a, they, again, they did a study of a small group of people, 156 African-American men and women, and they also traced their great-great-grandparents. We have a situation where we have environmental factors, right, that was created by the dominant white society, which again, I always talk about poverty. The environments around you affect your psychological and mental capabilities and that is the study that they found last year okay it's called epigenetic inheritance that is environmental factors affecting your psychological and mental okay your mental capabilities so when you have a situation where your environment the infrastructure right socially economically politically we are so far behind from the dominant white society this affects us in totality on a mental level which is why black people suffer from a mental disorder all right i talked about cognitive dissonance i talked about uh dr joy de Gruz, her theory regarding post-traumatic slavery syndrome all right Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, genetic annihilation from the dominant white society. They are in fear of our genetics because science is scientifically proven that black genetics is superior to the dominant white society. Genetically, we have been here longer on the planet from our haplogroups, our DNA haplogroups. We have been here longer on the planet than the so-called Europeans. All right, family. So. Again, when your history is taken from you, you're disconnected from that. And you have a lot of black people who are disconnected from their history, their true history. When I say history, I'm talking about their bloodline history. They are disconnected from their history and disconnected from their true culture. So when you ask a person about certain situations regarding, you know, civil rights era, right? Jim Crow, slavery, Right, or you can talk about antiquity in the days of the Nile Valley. Not true, not true, not true. A lot of black people do not know a damn thing about their history, and they. And if you ask a person why they don't know a thing about their history, you'll get you get some response that's like, "Oh, what that got to do with me? What that history back in uh, in the '60s? What that got to do with me? I'm trying to I'm trying to feed my family." What study in other languages in Africa? Why I gotta study the Menuneta? Why I gotta study this, that, and the dirt about Ethiopia? What does that have to do with me, right? Again, that is a form of a mental disorder affected by epigenetics, the infrastructure around you created by the dominant white society to keep us suppressed, to keep us hidden of our true history, our true power, our true culture from Africa, aka El Calbulon. That is the power of white supremacy, family. All right. We suffer from a mental disorder. The question is, what do we do to cope? What do we do to make sure that we acknowledge this 
mental disorder and we find other things to cope with this mental disorder. Again, we have to connect ourselves to our history. We have to connect ourselves to our culture, our true culture. All right, family? And I'm going to play a clip, right, to further illustrate, you know, what I was talking about. Dr. Vuai, who was a neuropsychologist, and he was in the video I shot a couple years ago, the Hidden Colors 1 panel discussion. All right. And this was a powerful discussion, but I'm going to play this clip for you guys to understand from a neuropsychologist perspective, right? Why your history is so important and being disconnect disconnected from that causes brain trauma. Here's the clip. One of the primary features of a traumatic brain injury. One of the primary features of a traumatic brain injury injury is memory loss memory loss so patients and one of the uh, one of the most interesting cases i had was a child who was in a coma like six months so what happens when the child recovers from a coma the first thing the child does is that he does not recognize his parents he doesn't recognize himself he has lost the ability so he's lost his ability to comb his hair or to brush his teeth and you really won't understand the nature of brain injury or appreciate brain injury until you see patients in this particular state. Most of the patients I evaluated were basically, you know, dead on arrival, if you will, but with good medical uh, technology, we're able to resuscitate these patients and able to recover to a certain degree, not in every case, but that's another discussion. I may have to come back for that one. That's, that's another, that's a whole other situation. So let's, de let's deal with why would a people hide information well, the answer to that, physiologically speaking, is to erase memory. Ooh. Basically. So if I want to control you, I'll just erase your memory. That, then not in your mind. Wow. You see? Now, memory is a very, very important neurological phenomenon. Because without it, you would lose your mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now what happens to patients when they come to the hospital? We have to evaluate patients based upon their mental status. Now, their mental status basically, one of the components, and again, I have to come back for some of these things because these are not easy. I have so much to say, but very little time to say it. One of the things that we'll do in hospitals when patients come in for psychiatric evaluation is one of the components of mental status is memory. You know, and so I ask you a question, what's your name? Where do you live? What's your mother's name? What's your social security number? Blah, blah, blah. Now, it, now one of the hallmark features, you have to understand though, but, but one of the hallmark features of mental illness is the inability to know who you are. Somebody got that one. <laughs> one of the components of mental illness is not knowing who you are. All right, family. So as you saw in the clip, Dr. Vuai illustrated for you that when your memory is taken from you when you have the inability to connect your history the inability to connect your culture that is a form of a mental illness all right family and that is from a neuropsychologist all right so it happens in every group even the jewish community the survivors of the holocaust and their descendants right they had issues and i'll have the i'll have the website on the screen for you to see all right it says that descendants of holy cost survivors have altered stress hormones parents traumatic experience may hamper their offspring ability to bounce back from trauma all right so this is affecting your hormones your dna this is a genetic trait when you are oppressed by another group of people dominated subjugated murdered lynched etc right for an extreme amount of time this causes a long lasting effect that devastates your well-being and again the inability to connect your true history your bloodline right family and again I i'm gonna say this one of the things you guys need to do, and I've done this before, it, the first thing you guys need to do to connect with your history, do a DNA trace. I recommend 
AfricanAncestry.com. There may be others that deal directly with African DNA analysis, but AfricanAncestry.com, as far as to my knowledge, is the most thorough. Do a DNA trace, okay, on your ancestry. Once you know that, you can connect the dots about your true history and go from there. All right, family? But again, we have a long way to go because every black person experiences a mental disorder because of their environmental factors, which is epigenetics. Poverty, all of these conditions, these stressful conditions, lack of jobs, lack of education, lack of resources to get out of your impoverished environment is all mapped towards the dominant white society that is racism white supremacy family it's a systematic approach to oppress a group of people it's just that simple and again i've read to you guys examples of other groups of people besides black dealing with trauma dealing with issues being oppressed and murdered by another group of people which causes extreme traumatic mental health issues that are passed down through genes this is a serious issue family that we have to resolve that we have to do further research on this we need more research we need more research methodologies on how to cope with these issues it only took me about three years ago three years ago to finally connect my true history and ever since then like Neely Fuller says I'm still learning I learn every day about my culture who I am who who my descendants were our languages we spoke in Africa everything I'm still learning I'm trying to connect the dots because when you have a situation where your culture was taken from you your language was taken from you English is not our native language you know we know this right we have outlets where we try to recreate who we once were for an example the hip-hop culture this is our culture the hip-hop culture is an example of something that we created right that is a frame of reference to our African ancestry all right so this is the issues that we have to deal with family we have to cope with these situations again we need more funding to continue research on these mental disorder issues these post-traumatic slavery syndrome issues that are being passed down to our children family to our children we need more research funding and we need to further connect with our history the first start is doing a dna analysis i recommend africanancestry.com uh, you may find others but make sure they're african-centered family all right so that's what i wanted to talk about i'll have all the links of what i use in this video down in the description make sure you like comment and subscribe and share this video this is very important family all right once again chauncey aka you karima great man of god media signing out peace